Uh, okay, enough talk about cricket. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're live. Um, uh, by the way, I do want to play cricket, so someday we should figure out how to help me do that. Um, next time I come to New Jersey. Hi, Sheetal, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Rob? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, and happy Friday to everybody else. Uh, welcome to another IBA Friday. Uh, this is Rob and Sheetal uh, coming at you through uh, LinkedIn. Um, and last week, Sheetal, you and I had a little road trip together with a couple of other colleagues. We were at Identiverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was exciting. <laughs> Absolutely exciting. Did you make any money, Rob? I do not play the tables at all. <laughs> Um, I stay as clear from that. I'm too cheap. I don't like giving people my money um, unless I'm going to get something in return. And um, just losing it is not, I, I'm too, uh, no, I can't do that. It's not, it's not part of my uh, DNA. How about you? Did you win anything? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I gained some nuggets of wisdom though about Oh, identity. well, that's good. That's why, well, hey, listen, there's lots of nuggets of wisdom to learn at Identiverse this year. Um, I had a horrific travel uh, experience getting down there. Um, a completely new thing for me, but we, we don't have to get into that again today. But uh, let's talk a little bit about Identiverse. Um, did you have a good time? We did. So, Rob, I know you this time around, you did a lot of planning for Identiverse and you us all together at the booth and, yeah. and you know lined all of this up so yeah. tell me tell tell us about your experience what kind of one when, when you were there at identifiers what what was happening at the booth what kind of customers came in to talk to us yeah there was uh there was i think a little bit of everybody from every market i think yeah. kind of ended up swinging by the booth uh Chito. and and what i did notice this year over any other year is that there was a lot of questions about identity verification. How do mm -hmm. I verify? How do I proof mm -hmm. uh, users? Uh, and can you do that? Um, and in, in previous years, that wasn't that really wasn't a uh, a question. There was you know a lot about passwordless or pass keys or whatever. But this year, it was really there was a lot of focus on um, how do we verify uh, a user remotely, and we had hotels, we had universities, we had banks, we had uh, big travel companies, we had um, uh, uh, amusement park organization, we had all kinds of people mm -hmm. coming by and asking us about identity verification. Uh, and it was a relatively steady stream mm -hmm. um, to that, you know, people asking about wallets, which mm -hmm. again was kind of the first time anybody really asked me about a wallet. So there was lots of um there was lots of interest in mm -hmm. in that. Were you, did you see the same thing or what were you seeing? Yes, I think pretty much the same thing, right? With respect to universities, we saw um people from universities, you know, so staff come in to see how can we verify our students mm -hmm. and make sure that from day one, they have a credential that they can carry with them. They can use it to log into their student portal. They can use it to get to their classroom, which is a beautiful use case, right? Where it's an absolutely streamlined access for a student from day one. Yeah. Um, so, so that was a really good use case. Uh, banks, we had a lot of banks who came in and spoke to us about, hey, do you have any kiosk-based verification? Well, you know, I can sort of do a self-service experience for ID verification uh, where a customer can step in and they can verify themselves and they can use that to recover their password, recover their yeah. account, or, you know, perform a high value transaction. So those kind of things. Um, we also saw, I mean, a lot of hotels and retail chains who were at the booth, right, uh, Rob, who yeah. were looking for solutions, especially around um, how can I have my hotel staff or ground staff authenticate on a day-to-day -day basis? So I was recently at a retail chain. I saw an employee who had a badge with a QR code um, and that's what they used to authenticate. Now, how, how easy is that to get uh, compromised? So, so that was a real world use case. So, so what can what can one Cosmos do in that kind of scenario, Rob? Like, how can we solve for that? Yeah, I mean, you and I have talked about that. I think in the past, and, and we've got you know we've got our one key, um, and that that was a popular discussion. And maybe we'll talk maybe the identity verification for help desk in a minute because that was another one. Mm -hmm. But but the shared workstation kiosk. How do I deliver a passwordless experience to those users that are at a um, at some sort of kiosk or a shared kiosk, whether that be retail, you know, again, some of the amusement parks that we talked about, you know, there's a lot of those shared workstations and, and they were struggling with um, trying to get a streamlined 
and secure solution that didn't rely on badges or things that can be stolen, things that be compromised, things can be forgotten at home because you forget it at home. Like, you know, what do you do when you get to work, right? Like that's that's a that's a hurdle that IT has got to jump through to try to get that to uh, to an employee quickly uh, and with as little friction as possible. And it's just, it's not doable. It's expensive, right? So when we were talking about our one key and, and what it brings to the table, there was a lot of interest in that because of the simplicity in the one to many scenario that we bring, right? You leave that that key in the uh, in the system. Anybody that walks up to it that has been registered to that device, type in their username, scan their fingerprint, and boom, they're mm -hmm. off and running, right? And that and that really resonated with a lot of people uh, that could buy the booth. And I, and I think you can probably sentiment the, the the same thing, right? Absolutely. So we saw a lot of people who were extremely. Uh, interested in that entire um, entire offering, right? Um, I know you wanted to go back and talk a little bit about ID verification and yeah. the help desk admin. So, so tell yeah. us a little bit about that. What kind of? Yeah, well, you know, being that we were in Las Vegas, um, and one of the biggest breaches of last year um, okay. happened to two of the major chains uh, that are in uh, in Vegas, all done through the same method, mm -hmm. uh, where somebody called into the help desk, impersonated a user and were able to reset and gain uh, the user's credential that they called in about. Um, so there's a lot of inquiries about how could we help solve that problem. Now, we already have a solution that we built uh, shortly after that, that attack happened because we have those capabilities. Um, and and uh, showing that to customers in terms of how it worked and what we delivered and how quick and easy it was, and that it could, you could drop it in and fit it into... Um, an existing workflow that's in place today uh, really uh, made people come to a pause. And they're like, really? Like, it's that simple? It's like, yeah, like we just send a link, we get somebody to scan their driver's license, scan their face, and we can prove identity in 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the help desk agent can continue on with the credential update, reset, whatever that might be. Um, and there were a lot of discussions around that because that's not something that's readily available uh, to customers. And they're struggling to try to figure out how they solve that problem. It mm -hmm. is a real attack vector um, that's becoming um, more frequent. And, you know, um, and in talking with customers, they were very intrigued by how that can be done and how that can help harden, I guess, the, uh, the security um, in and around help desks. You say talk. I mean, you talk to more customers than I did. Well, I don't know if you did. I think you were just in more meetings than I was. I was looking after the booth. But uh, what about you? What did you uh, What did you see? What were you hearing? So I think I pretty much heard the same things as you are. You know, the common themes were pretty much the same, right? How can I protect some of these uh, shared? The only thing that I wanted to add was we had a lot of. Um, customers who came in and talked to us about our wallet. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the entire concept of preserving an end user's privacy, how can I not, how can I make sure that we're not compromising data or yeah. a, a user's PII? Yeah. You know, that's, and everybody knows what a wallet is. And I think there was a lot of interest in that direction as well. How can we use a wallet in the consumer space? How can we use a wallet in a um, in a government space? How can we use it in 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 an enterprise space? Right. So a lot yeah. of conversations around that topic, um, around using an identity wallet, which was also very interesting um, to learn from from customers. Right. Uh, yeah. And really being at a booth, it gives you a very uh, humbling experience as to how customers can use your technology to move their initiatives forward. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got very unique use cases when they swing by the booth, right? It's like, hey, tell me about how you could do whatever my whatever my use case is. And, and while sometimes they all sound the same and, and, and you know, technically we're all solving, you know, we're solving the same problem, mm -hmm. the way in which that problem presents itself uh, can be very, can be very different at, uh, at a lot of these different um, Mm -hmm. prospects, customers, people that are that are swinging by the booth. Um, and it's it's interesting to learn from and hear um, about how a lot of these uh, different places are doing it. And, and, you know, listen, in some cases, some are trying to go out and do it on their own. Um, and they're just looking to compare, you know, what they're doing versus what we're doing. And, you know, does it make sense to have us do it for them instead of them try to go down the path and do it themselves? I mean, I had a couple of quick conversations with people uh, in and around that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, getting out and seeing a lot of these, uh, these, uh, or meeting, you know, a lot of these organizations and people that work for these organizations is, uh, is interesting. And it, you know, it, 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 like I said, at the very beginning, it spanned, it spanned pretty much everything, you know, like you said, there was, 
Uh, there were hotels, there were universities, there were banks, there was lots of government um, representation there as well um, at this event and, and looking into how can they deliver, you know, secure services to citizens and residents, right? Calling help desks or logging in to get uh, access to services and things along those lines. So um, lots of really good, lots of really good conversations. Um, you went to a couple of sessions. How were, how were the sessions? I actually went to a lot of the sessions. So I think Identiverse is a really good opportunity to see what's happening as trends across the industry, right? Um, definitely one of the highlights was what kind of new attack vectors are we seeing? And one of them even said um, there's it's CAS, C-A-S-S, -S, and it's Cybercrime as a Service, where you have these uh, wide range of call centers that can be set up to, to conduct uh, OTP fraud or you know capture-related fraud, different kinds of attack vectors that are emerging. Uh, but one of the attack vectors that we really covered this time was deep fakes right the prevalence of deep fakes and i think uh, one cosmos did a to, did a talk about how deep fakes are going to become more prevalent especially in, and is, is a threat in the id verification industry yeah. right yeah. uh so as a company we've we've put in a lot of research and invest in an in investigation into how can we ensure that when somebody is presenting their face in a remote verification scenario that is not actually a deep fake uh, so we do, we put a lot of mitigation strategies in place, uh, but it was really about educating the market saying, hey, yeah. this is the next big attack vector that anyone who's shopping around for an ID verification solution should really be uh, worried about or thinking about. So, yeah, yeah so I mean, mm -hmm. no, go ahead, sorry, no, go, you, you, you finish that. Yeah, yeah. So that was one definite trend that we saw. You know, new attack yeah. vectors, how they, how quickly they're they're spreading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that session that 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 we put on um, was with Mike Engel, mm -hmm. uh, who's some been on IBA Friday in the past, and we had a, one of our um, customers uh, partner up with him, uh, Jason Pratt. It was very well attended. It was very cool. I actually had somebody swing by the booth right after it was over. They're like, "Wow!" When he kind of transformed his face into Jude Law, that was kind of weird. <laughs> It's like, yeah, that's kind of where it's going. But, you know, really that the way I look at that, Sheetal, and I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but if you there, there are lots of different ways that you can you can you can you can fake. Now, deep fake is the is kind of the video version of it. But everything that we've been talking about up until now is that, you know, even when we look at the social engineering, you're 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 providing a fake identity. You're you're you're, you're becoming an imposter to try to get that information right to get that credential mm -hmm. so you know deep fakes you know really that starts um any fake of that nature really starts at you know doing proper identity verification you know doing triangulation against you know government issue documents and third-party databases and issuing databases and you know really bringing all of that stuff together and then you know you start to sprinkle in things like being able to um uh spot presentation attacks right so doing liveness checks and things along those lines like we do so having those conversations with customers because they heard a lot about deep fakes um but really unsure of well what does that mean to me and how could i go about fixing that and then talking about the liveness you know checks and the injection attack you know prevention and you know things along those lines um i think really went a long way and i got a lot of really good feedback on that uh, that session that we uh, that we had provided just based on that alone cuz really it was just a we deep fake that, that like that word really popped up all of a sudden it was like overnight like everything was about deep fakes and uh you know people were really interested in terms of what that meant and and maybe what that meant to them when they got back to the office right Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Even Andre uh, did his opening keynote and, you know, his opening keynote had like four deep fakes that were uh, right from, right up front, sort of competing with yeah. each other to to present themselves as uh, Andre. Yeah. So, so that's how the, the, the entire uh, sessions began. Yeah. Other than that, some of the popular trends were, of course, pass keys, a lot of conversations around pass keys, mm -hmm. the adoption of pass keys. Um, over the last uh, couple of years, we've seen it spike up in terms of the entire consumer space. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of tells you that, you know, end users are ready for passwordless authentication. They see the benefit in it. There are a lot of adoption metrics that tells us that pass keys can be very, 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 very um, fruitful in a consumer space. Sure. When it comes to, um, you know, how quickly you can restore them, how quickly you can adopt them, all of that information. So pass key is definitely something to watch out for in, in the next few, um, you know, next couple of years. Yeah. Um, definitely, you know, if in an enterprise setting, if there's a customer who needs to, to implement pass keys, 
of course, you know, it, it's a big burden on any enterprise, which is why they opt in and work with like single sign-on provider solutions yeah. like us, uh, where, you know, we bring in that capability and you're automatically able to inherit some of those capabilities from, from an implementation. Right? So definitely something you watch out for. And uh, finally, the good one was, of course, you know, the buzzword that everybody's talking about, which is AI in the security space. Mm -hmm. uh, seen a lot of companies uh, innovating in the entire AI space. Uh, one of the big topics that we saw was uh, very um, where AI was able to be a coach right, uh, where it is able to help you with very rich decision making. Um, a really good example was from uh, Microsoft uh, Copilot, where it was able to ingest a lot of data from different uh, endpoints and able to say, hey, why did this incident occur? occur? Uh, why was Rob challenged for MFA at uh, on May 9th? And it's able to give you a very beautiful summary of why he was um, challenged for MFA, right? And it's all in natural language, which makes it very easy for a support staff to break something down. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saw some really good trends uh, in AI as well. So that was just a quick uh, and, and good uh, learning sessions that came out of uh, the entire Identiverse uh, conference. Yeah, I guess that's interesting, right? Because now you would no longer have to kind of pour through audit logs to figure out mm -hmm. what happened and why. If that's able to kind of consolidate that for you in natural language, that's that's pretty powerful. Interesting. All right. Well, another IBA Friday. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. Listen. If if you went to Identiverse um, and uh, you know you uh, you have questions about anything that you saw there or uh, what how we relate to any of the things that maybe you uh, might have learned at Identiverse, you can always reach out to Sheila and I. Be more than happy to have a conversation with you. Um, and, uh, we can go from there, but, uh, for now, um, you know, thanks for joining us on another IBA Friday and I guess we'll see you in two weeks or so. Have a good weekend. Sheila. Bye.